Roll out the barrels, we'll have a barrel of fun. Hey, hey, everybody, it's Keeping Walton Disney. It's Brian. And uh, we're going to talk about the North Avenue Irregulars today. One of my favorite Disney movies of all time. I'm going to let Jared in. Uh, if this was, if I had to pick a top 10 list of movies, this would definitely be on it. So, hey, Jared. How's it going? <laughs> it's going good. I'm so excited to, to talk about this movie today. I love cause... how each time you um, sing, you open with the song. Yeah, that's like my signature starting uh, thing. So people know. We're in for a good time. <laughs> <laughs> can, uh, can you hear me? Is everything good? Yep, I can hear you. Okay, I'm Fine. Uh, in the chat, give us a thumbs up if you can hear us real quick. Uh, Hello, everyone. Hi, yep, Sage. Hi. Yep, I saw Elmer in there. I saw Jim. I'm having trouble scrolling through com comments right now, but uh, we'll, we'll, we'll hang in there. We're going to um, do something a little different today. We're going to involve the chat a lot more. Uh, we're going to ask you for your favorite scenes, but not yet. We're going to so be thinking about those and be ready to chime in when we get to that part. And uh, we're going to we're going to do that. So have some audience participation. I mean, we're going to we're going to chat with you guys throughout. <laughs> I know you guys are going to talk about stuff. But uh, let's try to stay on topic. We're talking the North Avenue Irregulars today. We're not talking crazy stuff in Disney. Uh, although, you know, we could probably do a whole live show on crazy stuff with Disney. <laughs> but, yeah, but that's well, not... Kind of crazy. Yeah. <laughs> North Avenue Irregulars is a different kind of crazy. Yeah, this is a fun kind of crazy. So hello, everybody that's joining in. I see Travis, Travis Shefflin and MD Snotty, one of our, our great... Uh, contributors to this show <laughs> so uh um yeah so what's been going on lately jared you staying busy yes definitely busy with work uh as you know a week and a half ago i went skydiving for the first time i saw your video that's crazy madness and uh <laughs> and that's, I didn't that's your your delaney rafferty uh impression <laughs> I was holding under a rope for dear life. No, it was uh, it was unbelievable, and I can't say I would not do it again. Wow. Okay. Well, I uh, would love to try that someday. Uh, you really? Someone someone asked if we ever seen the the snowmobile Detroit. Id Phillips. Yeah, we have. That's Jared's favorite movie, and we did a show on it. Go check my YouTube link, and uh, watch it. It's there on my YouTube channel now. The Nomobile is yep. my favorite Volterra, so. Right. Well, Andy Recoup says he's never seen the North Avenue regulars before. And uh, cool. He's going to get a review. We'll, we'll try not to give away too many spoilers, um, but we probably will. So, <laughs> but I, I mean, even, go ahead. The movie's 43 years old, so we might. Yeah spoil a little bit of it <laughs> but even if you listen to this whole thing and watch it you're still gonna laugh your head off so i, I don't think we're we're not gonna do it justice I there think. are so many little things in this movie that are just so ridiculous but even very well written and mm -hmm. the cast like uh, the cast is fantastic yeah so let's just dive right in um we usually start the show off by showing off our goodies, and I don't have much. <laughs> I, don't <either. laughs> I, I actually, I've got the DVD on the right, and what's on the left is I found a nice color image of the movie poster, and I printed it out four by six, <laughs> and put it in a frame. <laughs> Framed it. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I mean, I, I of course, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I of course have my VHS and my betas of North Avenue Irregulars yeah. uh, because I just loved them. But That's what yeah. you collect. Yeah. There was no uh, 
there was no soundtrack. There was no album. Mm -hmm. I know that you showed me that there was like promotional t-shirts online, but they're just inordinately expensive. So. Yep. Uh, so Chris has a, uh, oh yeah, the, the t-shirt that's on eBay right now. Go on eBay, type in North Avenue Irregular <laughs> shirt right now, and you could probably buy it. I, I'm not going to buy it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I have a couple of MP3 tracks of some music, so that will be my gift to the listeners. Hit me up with a DM later, and I'll send you uh, the, the track. So one of them is, of course, the Strawberry Shortcake Classic. Pass a little love around. <laughs> so. The strawberry shortcake classic. I mean, we just we need to sing that at church every week. Yeah, yeah. I'll we'll probably sing that later. So stay on. And uh, uh, we had about twenty. Now we have nine. So I don't think a lot of people are really interested. Let's asterisk wheel sing. Let's put a little asterisk in front of wheel. Yeah. Oh, okay. So I, it might be a solo. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> All right. Well, let's uh, let's dive in. Um, this film came out in uh, 1979, 43 years ago. Comedy crime film. That's how it's listed. And uh, it was directed by Bruce Bilson, who's still alive today. Uh, he I actually heard a podcast where he he did uh, he he was an he was interviewed by the podcast hosts. Um, what was the name of that podcast? I shared it with you, right? It, yeah, you did. And it is, I'll have to find it, but. Yeah. It was, uh, if you go to pot, your, any podcast thing, search in North Avenue Irregulars, episode 555 of like the production podcast or something. The, it was the Projection Booth podcast. Projection Booth podcast. They, they did a great job on, on this. And so um, I wanted to give them credit because I listened to that this week as I was preparing for this and I got a lot out of it. So thanks yeah, guys. It, yeah. Great job. I'm sure you guys are listening right now. <laughs> if you are, uh, there, chime in. <laughs> I will say there was some language in the podcast. So if you find that offensive, just keep yep. that in mind. Yeah, exactly. So Bruce Bilson was the director. The only other Disney thing I could find that he did was the ghosts of Buxley hall. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> which is kind of, which Ghosts of Buxley Hall is on Disney Plus, by the way, and the North Avenue Irregulars is not. That's that's the crime we need to be talking about. Exactly. <laughs> we need to get this. Like this I know. It's crazy. <laughs> so, but Bruce Bilson, he's not really known as a movie director. He did a lot of sitcoms in the 60s, 70s. Just about every single one you could think of. Best known for Get Smart and the Mary Tyler Moore Show. So, he probably already had experience working with Chorus Leachman there. Oh yeah, I've, I've been, uh, you know, watching Mary Tyler Moore, like I've been binging it. Yeah, the... I'm, I'm about to start because I need to. <laughs> so good. Yeah. So uh, let's see here, Bewitched, Gidget, The Odd Couple, MASH, Brady Bunch, all kinds of stuff. One cool thing though, and this is like way off topic, but his brother, is an accomplished forte pianist at Cornell. And oh. uh, which is, uh, you know, the forte piano is the ancestor of the piano as we know it today. And uh, Mozart, Haydn, and Beethoven composed a lot of pieces for it. So I thought that was cool. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty awesome. Yeah. And on that podcast, he mentioned that he was from a very uh, talented family, like his, uh, like all of his siblings are in either in theater or the arts or acting and directing. And so it yeah, was like, the... didn't his son write or co-write the Rocketeer? Yes. For Disney. Yeah. Which had Melora Hardin in it. Right. With Melora Hardin in it. Correct. Yeah. Who, who was in this movie? Look at that. Yeah. <laughs> A crazy connection there. So Jan from the office, this is her first movie. It is. Yep. Yeah. It, or if film. it's it's one of the first. <laughs> it's her first film. She had done a few uh yeah. uh TV shows. But it's her first film. So, uh produced by Ron Miller and we got to give Ron Miller a shout out. Of course, he's Walt Disney's son-in-law, Diane's husband. But this guy was on just he was 
a, the producer of just about every live action film from the late sixties to the early eighties. Mm -hmm. uh, his first one was uh, never a dull moment with Dick Van Dyke and Dorothy Provine. If you haven't seen that, you know, do it as soon as possible. Cause it's just as hilarious as the movie we're talking about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, so Dick Van Dyke, not only did Mary Poppins, you know, he did a, a couple other films for Disney. So if you can name the other one I didn't mention in the chat, go for it. Uh, and of course, Ron Miller was CEO of the Walt Disney company from 1980 to 84. And later on, he became the president of the board of directors at the Walt Disney family museum until he passed away just a few years ago, 2019. I absolutely yeah. love that museum. I want to go so bad. Oh yeah. It's, it's only like, it's great. <laughs> also it's, it, it's a must do if you're a walt disney fan for sure it looks like robbie c got the answer correct did he come up with lieutenant robin crusoe usn yes well a version of it. a version okay yeah all right <laughs> yeah there it is all right yeah and chris is like howard not on Disney Plus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll be the Howard in this movie, you know. Mom, why isn't this on Disney Plus? <laughs> okay. All right. And the screenplay was by Don Tate, who, boy, he did a ton of screenplays. Castaway Cowboy, Apple Dumpling Gang, Snowball Express. And here's where I'm going to kind of do a little deep dive. Right? This film was based on the memoir, The North Avenue Irregulars by Reverend Albert Fay Hill. So you see his name in the credits. And in his memoir, he retells this true story of fighting the mob in New Rochelle, New York during the 1960s. And New Rochelle, New Rochelle is a suburb uh, just north and a little east of New York City, kind of halfway between New York City and the Connecticut border. I drove through there on my way to go see Chris when I drove up to New to Rhode Island. I wish I had known I was driving through New Rochelle and the significance of the town at the time. Well, that's didn't. a hill on your, <laughs> that's an <epic. laughs> So let's, t let me talk about the real Reverend Hill really quick. Cause he's, he led a fascinating life, a very serious life. So he was a bronze star, a purple heart paratrooper in world war II. He used his GI bill to attend DePaul university in Greencastle, Indiana and then went on to Union Theological Summary at Columbia University in New York. So he became a pastor in 1961 at the North Avenue Presbyterian Church in New Rochelle, New York. So it's a real place. He, he earned a reputation as a man quick to take up for a righteous cause. Uh, not only that, he was very active in the civil rights movement. He witnessed the I Have a Dream speech. He battled slum wars, advocated for the arts, and even Duke Ellington, Ravi Shankar, they performed at his church, and Jackie Robinson even preached there. Oh, wow. That's awesome. Yeah. So he worked with the FBI to battle organized crime after local gangsters murdered a young man in his congregation who didn't pay his gambling debts. I don't think Disney went that far. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so he got really interested in organized crime. Uh, Chris says New Rochelle is where the Petri family lived on the Dick Van Dyke show. Okay, cool. Yeah. Awesome. Cool. Another connection. Great. Great chat. Chat amongst yourselves. Chris gave you a topic, the Dick Van Dyke show in New Rochelle. Uh, so Reverend Hill studied organized crime and came up with a plan to reclaim the community of New Rochelle from the mob. And uh, actual U.S. Treasury agents got word of his plan and agreed to help set up a citizen task force. But like we're going to learn in the film, the men were very reluctant to participate, probably because they were the ones gambling. <laughs> 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 and uh, so the ladies in his congregation, on the other hand, were very enthusiastic to help. And so what they did was they tailed numbers runners all over town, placing bets at local parlors. And this helped the treasury agents organize raids to rid the town of the illegal gambling. One large successful raid got the attention of the New York Times 
and they printed the story on the front page. And Cal's Publishing saw this, and they reached out to Reverend Hill and offered to publish a retelling of this whole story. And so in 1968, the North Avenue Irregulars, subtitle, A Suburb Battles the Mafia, was published. And uh, you can get it now. Uh, you can go grab a copy on eBay for $80 if you want. What a steal. I'm trying to find it on, in my library here. It's checked out. So dang it. <laughs> I, I read that, uh, that Walt Disney Productions purchased the right to the book right, I, I think, the year after it was published. Uh, yeah, pretty, pretty close to it. I think I'm going to mention that here. Oops, uh, also, and that's okay. I can't remember the year. Let me scroll down here. Uh, 76. He, uh, Walt, or not Walt, Walt was gone 10 years before that, but Disney acquired the movie rights in 76. So maybe they bought the, the rights to the book earlier than that. I don't have that in my notes. But back to Reverend Hill, let me just finish up with him. Uh, in 68, Hill was awarded Citizen of the Year in New Rochelle, and the National Council on Crime and Delinquency awarded him the Carl M. Loeb Award for Citizen Valor, in which several local and national politicians attended that presentation. So shortly after all those awards, you know, he was kind of weighed down with all the bling. Reverend Hill moved to Denver, where six months later, his wife passed from, to breast cancer. So sad. He remarried, retired from the ministry, and devoted the rest of his life to researching cancer and studying the intricacies of oncology and immunology, contributing much to the field. So as a cancer survivor myself, I appreciate that, Reverend Hill. Unfortunately, he passed away in 2014 due to pancreatic cancer. That's, oh my. that's sad, but... Um, it, it's a beast, you know, cancer is a beast. And if any of you guys are struggling with that disease, feel free to reach out to me. Um, actually six years ago, I'm six years, I'm six years cancer free. Almost. That's amazing. In September. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, 76 Disney got, uh, rights to the movie, but Reverend Hill, you know, he led such a serious life, you know? a celebrated life, solemn life. So was Disney going to produce an equally serious drama in the 1970s? <laughs> <laughs> the decade of Disney slapstick humor? Nope. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, and so the story of a pastor recruiting men to battle illegal organized crime and gambling and having the men wimp out and then the ladies wanting to help uh, the, the plot just naturally lends itself to a perfect Disney comedy film. So why don't you uh, give us a quick <laughs> MD snot. He's like, nope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not going to be a drama. So why don't you give us a quick uh, summary of the, the plot? And then we'll talk about the cast after that. Yeah, so, you know, we've done these Instagram lives before, and we've been pretty detailed in the plot. And I might be a little bit detailed, but I think I'm gonna I'm gonna brush through it a little bit quicker than normal. I apologize, but then anybody who hasn't seen it, look at all these gaps you get to fill in when you go and watch this incredible film. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, and Brian, correct me if I missed any names or any plots that point. Oh out. yeah, okay. <laughs> I mean, we'll probably catch them when we talk about our favorite scenes and, and the For cast sure. a little bit. So, well, you know, it starts out. It starts out like most of the Disney films of the 70s with this awesome animated segment at the beginning. Uh, you know, these ladies in this bur like trying to foil the burglar's plan. And then it opens with this pastor, this reverend, who arrives in town with his two children, a uh, boy and a girl. And he goes immediately to the church. They're so excited to look to look at the church and the kids go upstairs into the belfry and they're playing around and then they get called to come back down. So the boy decides to pull the rope up the bell, not realizing that there was a man painting the bell or painting the tower. I should say that the, yeah, bell, like the, the, bell. The, the tower that housed the bell mm -hmm. De Delaney. Uh, meanwhile, so then he starts ringing the bell and he's almost falling off 
like he's hanging off the side of the roof, almost falling to his death, screaming. And some ladies in the church are like, hey, uh, Rose, does, that sounds like your husband. <laughs> That's Delaney. <laughs> That's him. That's Delaney, all right. So then they all run outside and there's a whole bunch of hubbub. He's hanging there. It's This is very 70s Disney slapstick. And I'm sure that it is exactly what happened in real life. Oh, yeah. I'm just kidding. Totally. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so um, they save him. Great. They go inside. And, you know, the pastor introduces himself. What, a, what an introduction. The pastor introduces himself. And Susan Clark, who plays Anne, the secretary, and she's also the daughter of the old pastor who, uh, or reverend, I'm sorry, reverend who, who had retired, uh, mm -hmm. She's kind of giving him, giving the reverend the financial state and the state of the of the church in itself. So, but basically saying there's a lot of work to do. So the reverend decides that he is going to tell Rose, who's married to the old man Delaney, who was on the on the bell for, the bell. <clears throat> why don't you take? Uh, why don't you be in charge of the sinking fund? And Rose is so excited to do that. So she takes the money and she goes. I believe it's, what is it, 13, 1200 $1,206. $1,206. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Uh, Anne is like, okay. She's not very excited about that, but whatever. Cut to the church service. Uh, all the ladies are singing in the choir. Uh, and the Reverend is about to give his sermon and Rose comes and stops him. And she's like, I, I got to talk to you. And he goes, okay, come after the sermon. And she's like, no, uh, Delaney lost the money in a bet. <laughs> and he is like, excuse me. So he needs to get the money back. I think we can still, I think we can still reach him. I think we can still get the money back, but we got to hurry. So the Reverend gives like a, basically a two sentence sermon. And uh, he speeds off with Rose on a moped to go visit Harry the Hat, who was in charge of the gambling ring. <laughs> and uh, played by Alan L. Jr., the skipper on Gilligan's Island. That's way. right. Okay. I was like, I know he looks super familiar. <laughs> yeah. Um, <clears throat> and then uh, he, also, he also had a cameo in Back to the Beach with Annette Funicello from 1987. I recently rewatched that. And so... That's not where I knew him from. Take that, take that with what you, what you will. <laughs> so, the gambling ring is actually inside, well, is in the back room of a tailor. And in order to get to the back room, he had to leave his pants in a 50 cent donation. So he takes his pants off and he goes into the back room and everybody's back there gambling and they're all in their undershirts. In their boxers. <laughs> it's <laughs> great. <laughs> Classic. And he goes up to Harry the Hat, and he's like, I want the money back, blah, blah, blah. And he goes, oh, come on, just just let it ride. That's my suggestion, let it ride. Meanwhile, the race begins, and he loses, and, and the Reverend's like, I want that money back now. And so Harry the Hat's like, okay, okay, we got to keep it quiet, though. I don't want it to get around that I'm giving money back. So, hey, guys. Uh, give him, you know, show him where to go. Give him his money back. They push him outside and lock him, lock him out without his pants on. <clears throat> and so he gets really frustrated. He can't go back in. Uh, the front of the building now is locked and he realizes he's been scammed. So he gets back on the moped and drives back to the church, which they're taking a while to get out of the church. Maybe they just were having like a potluck or something after, after the service. Uh, yeah, yeah, but they, they get were... back. He runs into the church and this little girl's like, he's not wearing any pants. <laughs> uh, so it's pretty funny. So then the Reverend goes on a, I don't know if it's like a, it's like public ac access or something like that TV show. And he gives a speech basically like our town is being overrun by illegal gambling. We need your help. He gets a call from the, I don't know the exact, what is it? The elder board of the Presbyterian yeah, Church? Yeah, the Presbytery, they call it. Presbytery. Uh-huh. Um, that says, right. you are not supposed to be doing that. You need to, like, if they ask you to pray on, on the air, that's all you need to do. So, 
he goes, you need to do that. And then you need to get your attendance up. So he's like, okay, I was about to do that. I believe it's the next day he goes out door to door to the old parishioners who had left the church and is trying to invite them. And he, he ends up at this garage band called the Strawberry Shortcakes. And it's a youth, it's a youth band. And he goes, you know what? I have an idea. Why don't you guys come with me? And he brings them to the, to the ladies at the church. And he's like, I think we need them to spruce it up. We're singing a whole bunch of old hymns. Let's spruce it up with some great music. Get some, get our attendance up. And doesn't like this because the hymns have been great for years. And he goes, well, mm. we. Probably. Oh, you mean like faith of our fathers? Faith of our fathers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Cloris Leachman. Yeah, I, I, I got a little note on Faith of Our Fathers here. That's Johnny. a Catholic hymn written in 1849 by Frederick William Faber in memory of the Catholic martyrs from the time of the establishment of the Church of England by Henry VIII and Elizabeth. But if you want to hear a good version, don't watch this movie. Go search the Mormon Tabernacle Choir. <laughs> if you want to hear a hilarious Great person. Yeah, or wow. you want to hear Virginia Capers and Chorus Leachman. <laughs> yeah, Chris, okay, you you mentioned on on uh on while well, he's going out recruiting members, <laughs> he runs into this lady and she's like, uh, you want to come in for a drink? And she's like, I'm doing yoga and, and she's like <laughs> <laughs> and the and the guy's like, Well, you can do yoga and church at the same time. <laughs> Pretty funny. Yeah. So, meanwhile, the department or the Treasury Department has seen this broadcast. And so they go up to the Reverend. Well, they kind of scare him. They, they go to the, his office in a weird way. They, they turn off the lights and then are surprised when he gets defensive and scared, like, who are you? Mm -hmm. And um, he's like, they're like, we saw you and we want you to help us take down these criminals. And the Reverend's like, great, I want to do that. And he, like you had said earlier, he goes around to all the, the men, I believe the men of the church at their different jobs and mm -hmm. help. And they're like, no, no, nope. we can't. Do can't do that. Some of them are my customers. <laughs> <laughs> so you're, you're better with these quotes. Yeah. <laughs> um, but then Cloris Leachman comes to his office. So he's, he goes back to his office. He's sitting there. That Cloris Leachman comes to the office, tells him that the, what is it? The bean casserole, they have to raise the price from $1. Yeah, that's one of my favorite scenes. Should I just go ahead and do that now? <laughs> Why not? <laughs> so <laughs> I just love Cloris Leachman in this. It's hilarious. And she kind of walks in. She's like, I regret to inform you the Women's Association annual bean and salad supper will be $1.50 this year instead of the usual dollar. <laughs> 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 so, you know, Reverend Hill has this whole idea of, of getting the women, right? I, we don't know that yet, but he's like, hey, you know, he kind of comes on to her here. Want to spice up your life? What are you doing tonight? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, she's like, I, I will say when he when they first introduce each other at the beginning of the the beginning of the movie, you can tell Cloris Leachman is like, ooh, there's a bachelor, a new bachelor. Oh yeah, she had the hots for him. All, and and totally. the, the rest of the ladies were kind of Twitter pated too. <laughs> yeah. So uh, she, she's like. Um, He's like, what are you doing tonight? And she's like, well, I'm going to watch Casablanca for the eighth time, make a peanut butter and banana sandwich, and then hit the feathers. <laughs> so <laughs> so uh, he's like, well, meet me tonight at nine. And she's like, uh, nine? Oh, sure. <laughs> you know where I live? <laughs> he's, he says, that's too conspicuous. Make it the Sunday school room. Go in the side entrance. <laughs> and she walks away. Thinking like, hey, you know, this is a, I just got a finally date. gonna gonna get a guy, right? Yeah. So she shows up dressed to impress that night, and then discovers the real reason for the meeting, and, and she's kind of like, oh, I'll get you for this. <laughs> Her classic chorus Leachman way. 
these so are the, funny. It, it's so funny. And these are the little things in this movie that I appreciate. So when they open, the, when she opens the door to the Sunday school room, all the ladies are sitting around the Sunday school, like around a table, but they're all in kids' chairs. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> they're not, like, the Reverend couldn't have gone to the next room over and gotten some bigger chairs. Nope, they're all just cramped on these little tiny kids' chairs. It, That's little right. funny to me. So they're all like, oh my gosh, Chlor or what, I, what was her name? It wasn't Chloris, it was, I wrote it down. Which um, one? Chloris Leachman, what was her name on the movie? Oh, uh, Phantom Fox? Well, that was her call <laughs> sign. Claire. Her name's Claire. Claire. They're like, oh my goodness, Claire, you look so pretty. Yeah, wow. <laughs> date <laughs> night. Well, it was supposed to be date night. <laughs> well, hey, then, animation yeah. commendation. How you doing, Mark? Yeah, welcome. Oh, hello. Yeah. Um, sorry, guys. I'm so bad at looking at... I'm trying to. Oh, of course, Leachman was a regular on the Hollywood Squares, of course. Yeah. Or are you talking about Karen Valentine? I'm well, Karen. we're, we're, we're going to get to the cast here. Yeah. So <clears throat> then the two men from the Treasury Department come in. And they're like, uh, what is this? Why are there a, <laughs> why are there a bunch of ding-a-ling dames? <laughs> Harv. Harv. <laughs> <laughs> why are there so many ding-a-ling dames? Well, because we couldn't get the men to do it. All right, well, we'll do it. We'll do it. But my favorite part of this is when Barbara, Bar they're all like, yes, I want to do it. Yes, I want to do it. Barbara Harris is like, yes, I totally want to do it. But do you have provisions for babysitting? I know. <laughs> Kitty car. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening, Caleb. Joshua. Hi, Caleb. Um, so they are... Their first assignment is they're going to go out and they're going to try to make bets and try to get somebody to witness the bet. So Karen Valentine dresses up like a prostitute and goes to <laughs> for no apparent reason. And goes into a bar, but before she goes, oh, by the way, Karen Prost or Karen Prostitute, oh my gosh, Karen Valentine, Jane, <laughs> is going to be, <laughs> is yeah. going to be married. Yeah, and Howard. She has, yeah, what is it, Howard? That's his name, and, and his mom is, like, not buying it. <laughs> right? she's, not, she's not thrilled with the whole marriage thing. <laughs> well, so, so Karen Valentine's walking on the street dressed like a prostitute, and then uh, Howard and his mother are driving by and notice it. Well, she goes into a bar and she orders a drink and there's Marv there because they're, they're wink wink working together to place the bet but her plan gets foiled because Howard busts in and, and busts it up. So we'll cut to another scene where <laughs> Cloris Leachman and uh, the, other the other treasury guy. Oh are... before you get to that my favorite Karen Valentine we might as well talk about her. Yeah let's do it. Uh, Karen Valentine uh AKA June Bride, <laughs> Hot Lead and Cold Feet, which MD Snotty talked about. But my favorite quote, and Chris is nailing it right here. And she's like, He's just a guy. He bought me a drink. Is that a crime? <laughs> like my favorite Karen Valentine quote. Oh, I love it. Yep. Great. And I think you talked about Patsy Kelly. So uh, Rose Rafferty, AKA Barney Stone. Freaky Friday, Mrs. Smouse, right? <laughs> hey, I fired Mrs. Smouse. Yahoo! <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Her, her quotes are like, if it, you know, she's like wanting to join in all this whole crime fighting scene. She's like, if it gets me out of cleaning the oven, I'm game. Yeah, and she does of course. Honey, she just, she just oh, wants excitement. Yeah. Roll out the barrel. We'll have a barrel of fun. Yippee. And uh, let's see. You are, we've already talked about Susan Clark. Uh, folks in the chat mentioned she was on, on Webster. Also the Apple Dumpling Gang. Of course. Web, absolutely what I Yeah. Remember I Matt, Webster. Yeah. Yeah. She was uh, Dusty Clydesdale. 
Remember her in the Apple Dumping Gang. Mm -hmm. And Barbara Harris, who's Vicky Sims, a.k.a. Kitty Carr. And, of course, Freaky Friday, Ellen Andrews. Like, I don't know how she didn't win an Oscar for that performance. She's so great. And what I like yeah. about her reminds me a lot of Madeline Kahn. And yes. I love Madeline mm -hmm. Kahn as well. But they're both separate. Do you know what I mean? Like, she wasn't, they're not imitating each other. They're them. And it's just so great. Mm -hmm. uh, so great. And what, what, what's, what do you think my favorite Barbara Harris quote is from this film? Um, is it? I wrote <laughs> It's a short. <laughs> oh, Nashville, Barbara Harris, Nashville, Stonewall Chuck. Hey, man, how you doing? Yeah. Oh, before we move on, okay, wait. It's uh, whose chili dog is this? <laughs> <laughs> and then one of the car seat chases. It's like there's like nobody in the car. She's like, whose chili dog is this? <laughs> oh boy. Stonewall Chuck brought up an interesting point way back when you were talking about Reverend Hill on the cable access thing. He said mm -hmm. that that was a, a thing that uh, a lot of TV stations did right before they went off air to play the national anthem. They had a, a preacher come on and, and do a prayer and offer some words. But instead of doing that, Reverend Hill said, hey, we need to fight crime and get these gamblers out of our out of our town. So thanks. That was a great little tidbit of uh, television history I didn't know about. Yes. I never got to stay up late till the stations went off the air. My dad was very strict. <laughs> so, oh, and then finally, the last lady is Virginia Capers, Cleo Jackson, a.k.a. Clunker. <laughs> Oh, gosh. She was in the world's greatest athlete. I don't recall which role she was. I'll have to watch that again and look for her. Uh, but one of my favorite quotes is like at the very end, she's like driving the, uh, the one owner <laughs> <laughs> dump truck. And she's like, stand back, heavy duty coming through. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So where were we? Oh, we're just about to talk about Cloris Leachman and Voorhees going to the flower shop, right? Yeah, they go to the flower shop to, to cast a bet and, with Giant, apparently. Um, and she places the bet and she's like, oh, is this good? Is that good? And then she starts talking and the giant overhears and he, so their plan is foiled. So it's basically setting Oh, uh, yeah. We got a good deal on chrysanthemums. <laughs> <laughs> I want to bet a hundred on these three numbers of <laughs> the way she looks up at him. It's hilarious. Yes. Great well, camera the... angle. It was so great. Um, <clears throat> So it's setting it up that they are kind of dingling-y. I hate using the word dingling dames. Dingling dames, yeah. Um, so I think just to save some time, the next three, uh, Barbara Harris and uh, uh, Virginia and Patsy, they all go, <laughs> they all go to a restaurant or like a burger joint or something like that. Oh, yeah, like one of those little sidewalk stands. They're all, uh -huh. they are separately. Oh, this is so good. They're all in glasses and <laughs> I'm sorry. It's like, it's so how, how inconspicuous can you not be? I don't know what's going on. I'm sorry. <laughs> this is the funniest scene. I didn't pick this as my favorite scene. Maybe you did, but. I didn't pick it because I thought it would be yours. Um, I don't think I picked that one. Okay. Oh, I put that as a uh, an alt, and I did the same reason, because I thought you would pick it. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> well, go ahead and tell us what happens there. Sorry. <laughs> so, you know, Patsy's there first, and then Barbara Harris shows up, and she's like, great. We look like the Bobsy twins. And then... <laughs> And they're all like, we want to place a bet. We want to place a bet. And yeah. so the guy... Oh, my, my horoscope says even numbers are all good luck. <laughs> <laughs> the guy goes into the back to 
yeah, Chris, uh, the, it, it's such a great scene. It's so good. And <laughs> Patsy, so the guy goes in the back to do the bet, and Patsy goes, "I brought a um, a tape recorder," and and, <laughs> I start, and they're like, "Does it work?" Oh yeah, it should. Well, we should test it. So of course, it's all the slapstick humor that you would see on even Saved by the Bell, kind of where it's like, oh yeah, speeds up, <laughs> but then it starts playing a song, and they just go with it, roll out the barrels. Oh my gosh! And they all just start going with it. They all start singing, roll out the barrels, and then just back away. It's just like <laughs> back away, back away, back away. It's such a great scene. Yeah. She's like, Delaney told me the tape was blank. <laughs> <laughs> always blame on Delaney. It's always Delaney's fault. <laughs> and uh, oh, I guess the, they, they didn't do a very good job pulling off the Andrews sisters. But, you know, an Oscar-worthy performance. So funny. So good. So you know now- what? If we ever go to the parks... You know, mm-hmm. me, you, Jim, Chris, all you guys, everybody here. Um, we should dress up like them Don't and sing that. Roll Out the Barrels. But we'd be dudes. But who cares, you know? We all nobody, nobody would even know who we were. <laughs> Speaking of Jim, Jim just joined. Hi, Jim. Hey, Jim. Yeah. He heard me talking about him. Um, so they realized round one of this is not going great so they all meet up but the but the ladies want to they all meet up i think at this church again and they're all like we we want to try it again and marv is like what and he goes no we failed and they're like no we want to meet up again he goes well the best way to do it is with these cb radios but we're not paying the money for it and so of course leachman's like well i'll spring for it i'll spring for the cb radios Mm -hmm. so they all go out to train to trail um to trail the oh my gosh I'm, I'm blanking they're trailing the guy who they think is why can't i think of it right? oh it's it's the guy in the white car they think he's the, one of the money runners yeah so they're, they're they the this uh plan round two is let's see if we can't intercept some of these guys and maybe they'll lead us to like the headquarters or something. Yes. So they're all in their separate cars. So we've got Barbara Harris, who has a ton of kids. She's a soccer mom. <laughs> the Katie car. <laughs> car. Uh, we've got Virginia Capers, whose husband owns a used car dealership. And her car. Oh, this is my second favorite scene. Can, can I do it here? Yes. All right. I'm, I'm, I'm. I'm getting in your kitchen. Is this one of your favorite scenes? It is, but that's fine. We can share. Okay. So you already described the plan, right? And you got like Harv and Voorhees, right? Like, uh, blah, 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 blah. oh, the plan doesn't work. Oh, you already talked about that. <laughs> I'm like trying to look at my outline here. Oh, here we go. And so they're all out, right? In the neighborhood. And yeah. Harv gets on the CB radio and he's like, this is home plate calling all units. <laughs> and then everybody just chimes in all together. One of, it's like, this van full of this kind of car. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, one at a time. How about you, Phantom Fox, in her classic red Lincoln Continental? I love that car. I want it. I think it's a Lincoln Continental. A- am I wrong, you guys? Chris, fact checker Chris? He could- <laughs> so she's like uh on her cb radio she's like um max her dog max well, and i are her cb radio is oh more- yeah <laughs> it's like a red telephone right <laughs> it, she has one for each of her cars and that one is a red car so she has a red old landline telephone receiver yeah yep <laughs> That's right. with her with it nails where she looks like Edward, Edward's oh, hands. <laughs> I know. They're like four-inch nails. <laughs> Elmer's favorite scene, he already said that, when she breaks them. Oh, spoiler alert. Hmm. So she picks up her red receiver. Chrysler. Is it a Chrysler in New York? Uh, I don't think it's a Chrysler. 
It looks like a link. Well, we're going to have to do some research. It is. Is it a Chrysler New Yorker? Because I had one of those in the early 80s. Huh. That, that looks like a Lincoln. But um, we'll have to look that up. Uh, anyways, she is, uh, she said, Max and I are at Freddy Two Fingers Snooker Parlor, and I expect to be murdered at any minute. If that should happen, can someone contact Alfredo? He does my hair. <laughs> <laughs> and another one, like, then Kitty Carr gets on, on the line and she's like, oh, I, I, and they, because they ask her to trail the white car who they've all lost. Right. And they're like, Kitty Carr's close. And she's, she's like, um, it's my day to pick up the Cobras. They're six and two on the season. If they beat the Tigers. <laughs> they're a cinch to make the playoffs. <laughs> So all these, this car chase ensues where each lady is, is trying to tail the white car. And so um, Marv thinks the money runner is getting a little suspicious. And then there's this one scene where all five of them are following the car. <laughs> like He goes around a corner and then all five go around the same corner. And Marv's on the radio, Harv. He's like, peel off, peel off, which all the ladies do, you know. Uh, and Harv's assuming one of them is going to stay on the tail, but they all peel off and they lose the guy. And then the scene shifts to Harv in bed dealing with his gastric pain. Like he's ready to like, yeah, he's like, okay, round two, this is not good. Yeah. And I just love this scene because man, this is one of the reasons why I love this movie because you get such a great look in the late seventies, early eighties, Los Angeles, suburb streets and and all the cool things on the that you can look at like i i know this this neighborhood it's like lancashire boulevard and the ventura freeway oh you know, I, right the, it's like i think it's like the intersection of 134 and lancashire there in in like north hollywood west burbank north hollywood yeah and i literally and, live down the street down did the street. you really no i do right now <laughs> I, like I remember going down there because my dad was uh, a, an animator at Cal Arts, and uh, well, he, and he would take us to the we'd drive around Burbank, and he'd show us the studios. Like I'm going to work there someday, guys. And mm -hmm. well, he ended up being a high school teacher instead. But uh, Reseda High School and and all those areas there, and the old Los Angeles River drainage canal. <laughs> well, and they don't hide the fact that isn't it. Is it? It's in New Camden, but yeah, New, New Camden Cam is the name of the the fictitious town, right? But is New Camden supposed to be in California, Southern California, or? <laughs> well, I, I don't know. It sure doesn't look like New Rochelle, New York. That's for sure. Because <laughs> I don't think Ralph's is on the East Coast. <laughs> yeah, well, that's right. There is a scene in a Ralph's grocery store parking lot. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's definitely a Southern California grocery store chain, right? Yeah. But that's just one of the great things I love about this movie and looking at all the old Volkswagens because I used to have, I used to be a Volkswagen guy. Mm -hmm. I had like a 62 VW ragtop. I had a 71 or a 69 camper bus. And uh, it's just, I'm just drooling at all the VWs everywhere. It's just like, I want it. I want that. I want that one. I need that. <laughs> well, I love, look, when they all split off, I loved when they're, <laughs> They're like, who's following? Well, Marv's like, who's following them? And one by one, they show them all earnestly being like, I peeled off, just like you told me. I peeled off. <laughs> yep, I peeled off. We did yeah. what you said. We, we I, followed. And, and he's done after this, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> he's checking out. He's got his Maalox and he's lying in bed. <laughs> well, while he's lying in bed, the Reverend's like, uh, we want to do it again. And he's like, <laughs> yep. absolutely not. So they moved headquarters to the church at that point. I think they were in a hotel room before and uh, moved it to the church. <clears throat> and so let's see, hold on one second. Well, and so Anne comes in while they're trying to do another little steak, stakeout type thing. And Anne comes oh, in. Don't, and don't they have a, a, a quick little scene where the strawberry shortcake band is playing in church right here? Oh, yes. Well, yeah, no, no. Because that, that's my other favorite scene. 
No, they do, but it's right after this. So Anne oh, okay. out and resigns as the church secretary. She's like, I just can't do this anymore. She wasn't, Anne, Susan Clark was not part of all of this. Right. All of this trying to find the bad guys. Uh, she said she's also going to go to the church committee. Then it's Sunday morning and Strawberry Shortcakes play at church. And the song is so ridiculous and it's such an earworm. Mm -hmm. And it's so great. Everybody's clapping. Everybody's clapping. Everybody's singing along in church, except for two of the bad guys who are sitting in the back. Oh, of the that's church. right. Yeah, they're kind of spying on, on things. Yeah, because they at this point, they kind of caught on, right? That, that all their gambling operations are being slowed down by these dingling. meddling, meddling dingling dames. <laughs> <laughs> uh, meanwhile... So later that night, the Reverend goes to tuck his daughter in and Melora Harden, and she's upset. She's like, why can't you just be my dad? Why can't you just be a minister and a daddy? And while he's tucking her in, <clears throat> I believe Susan Clark is emptying her desk, basically, at the church. She goes out to her car mm -hmm. and the church blows up. Not the whole... It's not yeah. like a giant explosion. Of Bad enough to start a pretty nasty fire. Yes. Yeah. So this is like really where uh, there's kind of like the the, som the somber part, you know, like you, you talked about little, what was her name? Carmel crying and, yeah. and, and Susan Clark's character, Annie, I think. And, and how much she loves this church and how things are just going crazy. The reverend's getting too, too uh, nuts about this whole mission and uh, this just kind of, yeah, go ahead. Well, this makes um, Anne realize we can't do this anymore. We're not going to take, like, this has gotten so bad that they're now attacking our church. I'm going to fight with you now. We're going to do this. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so all the ladies are Brian sent you a picture of the 1979 crisis. I'm going to look at Facebook right now and see it. <laughs> By the way, can we call Chris? Can we call you the FCC, the fact checker, Chris? Yeah, fact checker, Chris. Yeah, uh, see, see that that doesn't that doesn't look like it because this her car was a two door coupe with the more round yeah I don't, that grill doesn't look like it but anyways anyways we're back to the back to the church we're back theme. to the church well it's the next morning and now we're like everybody's gung-ho now Anne is gung-ho so she wants to be part of it well at this point Anne brings a letter into the office and basically, it's from the committee, the Presbytery or whatever. <laughs> okay, I won't call you late to dinner, Chris. Uh, but... <clears throat> <laughs> Just <to go. laughs> it's, That's so ridiculous. I love it. <laughs> um, basically, she gets a letter and says, you know what, the North... The, the, they're not going to rebuild North Avenue Presbyterian and the pulpit is going to be vacant. Basically you're fired. Everybody's sad. Um, <clears throat> but that's, that's, so everybody goes back to their normal lives at this point. They kind of give up. Well, and decides that she's going to pick up Ruth Buzzy and I did not get the other guy's name, another church, like a church elder type person. And she's driving them, I believe, back to the church where the reverend is meeting with a higher up person in the church. Committee. Yeah, well, he's going to get fired, right? He's going to get fired. <laughs> this is it. Artist not to get fired. And... <clears throat> Uh, and notices that the van that caused her 
radio to go staticky is right beside her, but it's like been concealed with something else. It's like a camper van now. And she goes, I know that that's the bad guy. I, I know that that's the bad guy. So she calls the Reverend and is like, I've got the bad guy. We can follow him. And he's like, no, I'm trying to get my job back. And she goes, but we got him. We got him. And he's like, you know what? I'm going to screw it. I'm going to do it. He opens up the double door thing and it's like the map in there and the, and the Presbytery guy's like, what is going on? Yes. And, well, and when, when <laughs> earlier on in the movie, when Anne saw that map, she's like, what are you, a, pre a preacher or Batman? <laughs> so one of the funny things and, and chris is kind of chiming in on it right now and it's like ruth buzzy you know she's like a she's like dr rhodes or something like dr ream so she, dr ream mm -hmm. and she's like real serious you know we're, we're gonna close you down and, and we're, we're gonna end in your time at north avenue presbyterian church but then She's got this little side hustle, right? <laughs> Where she she loves CB radios, and uh, she sees that, that this is kind of like their plan to to catch the bad guys, and then she she's all in, right? Mm -hmm. She's like, she's like, hey, Reverend, in the back seat, check for Smokies and plain brown wrappers, <laughs> <laughs> like the cops. <laughs> and he's like, are you sure you're doing this? And she's like. Heck yeah, I'm doing this. I haven't had this much excitement since I got snowed in at the Elks convention. <laughs> which is like one of the oddest lines in this movie. It it's, kind of reminds it's, it's, it's so like Oh, did I lose you? No, can you hear me? Yep, I can hear you. It's, it's so, uh it's so hilarious. Cause you know, there's a little bit of like sexual innuendo when the Reverend is hitting on, uh, on um, Phantom Fox at the beginning. Mm -hmm. And then it kind of comes back here and you can tell it, Susan Clark's expression. She's like looking at Dr. Dr. Reen, like, what did you just say? <laughs> <laughs> Snowed in at the Elks convention. And of course the, the Elks are, it's like a fraternity, right? <laughs> yeah, that she snowed in with these guys, and well, I don't think she wanted any more information at that point. <laughs> this is this is leading up to one of my favorite scenes, mm -hmm. and it's a conglomeration of all of. So the Reverend is like, gather all the ladies together, kids, go find um, Barbara Harris, <laughs> let her know we're we. We've got the bad guy in sight. So apparently it's June 25th because it's the June bride's wedding day. And this is what I find so odd about it. These ladies are all besties, right? They're all painting together. They're all, you know, doing this oh, okay. <laughs> undercover work. But none of her friends are at her wedding. And it's not... <laughs> It's not like it's a small, intimate wedding. There's, it's like a big reception in the back, you know, in the park. It's so odd to me that none of her friends. Cloris Leachman is getting her hair done and her nails done. Uh, Patsy is just sitting at home with her husband. And the Barbara Harris is going to a pet show with all the kids. None of them can say, <laughs> hold up, everybody. My best friend is getting married. It's so ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it, it's kind of like, it's kind of like the people you know at work, right? You 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 may not be their best friends. You're certainly not going to go to their weddings. That's kind of like the way that, the way they are. <laughs> but yeah, I never realized that until you said it just now. It's like, how come they're not all at her wedding? What's going on? <laughs> About her wedding, this entire movie. Set aside June 25th to to marry us. Yeah. Nobody's there. And he, and he didn't, and Reverend Hill, she asked him, right, to marry them. And he didn't, he wasn't there for that either. <laughs> Nobody was there. Nobody. So I laughed so hard when I saw it. And that's when uh, Barbara, Harris, <laughs> Barbara Harris is going to the pet show. With oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> like, great of pets. And that is that the scene with the corn dog line? 
or the chili dog? Uh, it's it, that's right after. That's like before you know, the the traffic jam with all the snakes and chickens and stuff. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. So anyway, they all meet up and they all are driving there. Well, I forgot to mention this earlier. Each car that um, Virginia Capers drives from her husband's car. Uh -huh. Different. It's a different car, and it all has a different saying. And my favorite one was the saying, <laughs> "A honey." <laughs> <laughs> you know when people pose or at car lots, it's always like, "This one's a winner," or three thousand miles," or something. They put it in the window. That one says, "A honey." I know. <laughs> it's like. Yeah, well, I wanted to meet her husband so bad because he just seems like the, the typical used car guy, you know? A uh, honey, uh -huh. one owner, so great. rare beauty or something. Rare, like yeah. That. <laughs> so, so anyway, they're all driving from all, all areas of town and they go to the desert. And <laughs> they, meet up as, uh, they meet up at the desert and they, they find the bad guy. They find where all the bad guys have been met up have been meeting up and they decide how are we going to stop them? Well, let's have a demolition derby or a bit what the baby buggy chase. And basically they ruin all of their cars, all of their cars trying to stop these bad guys from winning. This is where Cloris Leachman breaks her nails into the ceiling and she gets so upset by this. Well, for, like her hair is in this bonnet thingy that, you know, she's getting her hair done. She looks a hot mess anyway. And then they ruin her nails. Come on. And all the kids are standing on top of like this tractor, just cheering it on. Uh, Ruth Buzzy and, and Mer Mary, or, oh my gosh, Susan Clark and the other reverend are standing on top of another truck commentating. And Susan Clark is like, telling which ladies watch out here there's somebody behind you it's very mad Kate. <laughs> and and all the kids are like on top of another car cheering and i mean this isn't the most safe situation going on there's gunfire <laughs> kids are like jumping around cheering it's wacky <laughs> and there's side swipes but there's a lot of head-on collisions too oh yeah yes 14 cars and one motorcycle destroyed mm-hmm um but they catch the bad guys. Susan Clark is like $1,200 for the sinking fund. <laughs> In the middle of all that, it's like she's got this wad of cash and she <laughs> takes out the 1200 I got the sinking fund money back. <laughs> they meet up. <laughs> this movie is full of little tiny jokes like that. They're just like, oh yeah, she is. Cloris is wearing that weird little hat. Yeah, that's <laughs> this all happened. Yeah, it? because like while they while Susan Clark was uh, giving the play, you know, this all went down. Everybody was busy doing stuff like, you know, Karen's getting married. She's getting her hair done. And then you meet Alfredo. <laughs> she's going you out. Do to meet her, <laughs> yeah. And she's going out to her beige Lincoln Continental with Alfredo and Alfredo's assistant. That's so fun. So ridiculous. Yeah. But that saves the day. They all meet up outside. It's Sunday morning again. They're they're having an outdoor service with a burnt church. There's, mm -hmm. and they get the news. You know what? The elders changed their mind. North Avenue is going to live to see another day. And then the strawberry shortcake sing us out. The end. Yep. The end. <laughs> the all end. right. Well, yeah, that was great. Good job on the plot. I think I, I, I knocked out a couple of my favorite scenes. Um, one, one that you, uh, you, you talked about it, but I wanted to point out a couple things on when the strawberry shortcakes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, let's go through the, the comments here real quick. See if I missed anything. I love everybody chiming in on, on uh, their stuff. So now we want you guys to, uh, to, uh, go ahead and throw your favorite scenes out there. And cause we didn't really get into too much detail with the plot, but if you want to put your favorite scenes, like, like Elmer, I saw that he, his favorite scene was the broken, 
Broken Nails. Oh, MD Snotty, yes. In the in the UK, this movie was called Hills Angels. I thought that was funny. <laughs> it's so cool. Yeah. yeah. Um what one of my favorite scenes, we talked about it a little bit, but it was um Virginia Capers when it was the first time they were out doing their their assignment. Or I'm sorry, the second time, not the one where she's placing the bet. And she gets the chance to start chasing the guy and her car won't start. And so she has to take her, what is it, nephew or son or grand yeah. grandson or whatever out and um some baby. Puts him in <laughs> puts him in a baby buggy. And then the police stop her and they're like, uh, you need to move your car. And she's like basically is trying to avoid it because she needs to get to work. She has got to get to work. And she is just running through the streets with this baby buggy. And he goes, if you don't do it, I'm going to tow it. And she goes, go right ahead. <laughs> go right ahead. She, she was so great in that scene. She didn't have a whole lot of real, um, air time, I don't feel. And I feel like she mm -hmm. couldn't add more. Yeah, I agree. That that's the that's the one where she says like no sir it belongs to classic used cars it's not mine yes. <laughs> I don't care if you do yes. it. <laughs> yeah yeah she was a little underutilized but that scene with her Barbara Harris and and Patsy Kelly singing roll out the barrel is just awesome yeah that was her her time to shine. Oh, everybody's loving Ruth Buzzy. Yeah. <laughs> well, Ruth Buzzy's great. I mean, we can go a little bit through her. She was in a bunch of Disney stuff. Yeah. Yeah. The, Talk about her a little bit. Uh, she was, you know, she did a couple of voices in the 70s for Disney on the Aristocats. And then It's Tough to Be a Bird. And then. Oh, she, yeah. That's with Dick Bacallion narrating. I love him. He's another 1970s live action stud. Yeah. Oh, and she also did a voice of German Mouse in The Rescuers. And then for live action, okay. Freaky Friday, Apple Dumpling, yeah. and, and North, North Regulars. And then in the 80s, she also voiced, did some voices on Darkwing Duck and Chip and Dale's Rescue Rangers. Yeah. Oh, she was on <laughs> Laughing. Yes, of course. Yes, Chris. If you don't shut up, you wish you had. <laughs> hey, you oh, I know. that kid like that. <laughs> Back to the baby buggy scene where she's like yelling at the baby and there's like this lady on a, yeah. on a bench waiting for a bus. And she's like, you shouldn't talk to babies like that. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't shut up, you'll wish you had. That's, what... <laughs> that's, that's another one of my favorite, like, uh... oh, I can't remember her character's name. And that it was uh, uh, Cleo, Cleo Jackson, Clunker. <laughs> Lump. Yeah, my one of my favorite Ruth Buzzy um, appearances is in Freaky Friday. Is the one the opposing team's uh, um, field hockey coach, mm -hmm. <laughs> and she's like, "Okay, everybody, we're here to have a good time, but we're gonna kill <laughs> Andrews. Get Andrews!" <laughs> oh, she's so great. Oh man, yeah, she's been in. She, you know, she's alive still. I follow her on Twitter. She lives up. Uh, she's in Texas. She's up near Fort Worth. Nice. I'm gonna try to reach out to her sometime, and maybe we'll we'll have her on the, on a podcast sometime. That would be awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Well, my last favorite scene was when the strawberry shortcakes perform in the church, and there's just so many little things in that scene that that are just hilarious to me. Um, you know, they're they're singing. It's like. They're like singing, pass a little love around. And then, of course, Leachman's like, Sunday, like way off key. <laughs> pass a little love around. And Cleo's like, Monday, pass a little love around. And everybody's jamming, you know. Uh, Karen Valentine is like jamming on the organ. Doo -doo 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 -doo. <laughs> so hilarious. And then, of course, Howard and his mom are in the, in the, in the congregation. He's like, you're going to marry that girl? <laughs> By the way, Howard only cared about his car the whole time. He kind of, kind of ticked me off a little bit. He did only care about his car. Obsessed with his car, and then it was nice to see in the end. I mean, dude, that car like flipped upside down and just kind of came to rest on the Rolls Royce, and then the Rolls Royce was completely totaled. 
<laughs> I think it was held together by four bolts, like, you know, four bolts. That's all that holds a Volkswagen engine in. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. Everybody's on board with the Ruth Buzzy uh, podcast. So, you know what? Maybe I'll do that. And I'll talk to Chris and Ruthie and my podcast co hosts and see maybe we can do something like that. That would be so fun. You should. Uh, anyways, back at the church. And then my favorite part there's like a rocking grandma. I love my rocking grandmas, like <laughs> Pollyanna rocking grandma on the drums. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah, I love that part. So let's see what you what are your favorite scenes, you guys? Oh, Jim Celebration Disney. He loves uh, the scene with Karen Valentine going into the bar. He's just a guy. He bought me a drink. Is that a crime? And one thing I love about that is like the interior of that bar. So th this is another reason why I love this movie. All the scenes of 1970s LA, great, like those that vinyl, what is it called? Vinyl leather cushion seats mm -hmm. everywhere, and those bar stools that swivel with the, they have backs on them. <laughs> and uh, cigarette machine, did you catch that? There was like a cigarette machine right there. We used to. When I grew up in uh, Canada, and we used to go every. Friday, we'd go to the hockey rink and the church teams would play against each other. Well, yeah, there would be church teams play against each other. So we'd go for that. But for an hour before, it was free skate for everyone. But I distinctly remember there being cigarette machines everywhere. Mm -hmm. So, you know, yeah, yeah. And the, so. you like put your money in and there was like a knob you had to pull. Out. I used to buy my grandma's Virginia Slims in there illegally, <laughs> put like a couple quarters in there. And then you like press like a button and then you pull out the knob and, and you the pull out the knob. Would, yeah. <laughs> Used to buy my grandma Virginia Slims at the Golden Corral. Well, times they are a changing. Yeah. Oh, Jim Miles has another quote. And let's see if you remember what this is from. You mean we're all supposed to pretend he has pants on when he doesn't? Uh huh. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's the scene when the reverend goes back to the church uh, mm -hmm. after he's locked out of the of sam the taylor's money, money hustler place <laughs> and barbara harris is like don't ask why we don't ask why <laughs> <laughs> oh boy I, I love everybody's you know okay when i got into live action movies I mean, I've always watched these ever since I was little, but really starting to enjoy them and study them uh, right around 2015. Okay. And I really focus more on the 50s and 60s and a little bit into the 70s. And uh, I think Jim Miles, he introduced me to this movie. I w we, were, we were chatting on Instagram probably like seven years ago. And... and uh, I told him I had never seen the North Avenue Irregulars. And it was exactly the same as somebody saying that they had never seen Star Wars. That's the reaction <laughs> I got. <laughs> and so I immediately bought the DVD and I thanked Jim and another one of my great friends, Angela. I don't think she's on here tonight, but uh, uh, they, they were just, they absolutely loved this film. I remember it was him Angela and I were all chatting about it. <laughs> it's so, so great. Yeah, classic. So let's let's get into some fun facts. Unless anybody's got any more fun scenes to share. I'm kind of scrolling through the comments. I think Ryan mentioned that the last time he saw this was on Treasures from the Disney Vault on TCM in 2019. Yeah. You're going to have to buy the DVD if you guys want to see this. I don't. Is it on Amazon Prime for streaming? I don't uh, you, think it's on Apple. You can rent it. Yeah, you can rent it on Prime and Apple. Okay. Oh, you can. Okay. Uh -huh. Or you can purchase it, but they're pretty expensive. Yeah. Uh, well, if it's already a high definition version available for streaming, then why can't it come to Disney Plus? Like, uh, you're preaching to, well, here you go. Pun intended. You're preaching to a choir. <laughs> Faith of our <laughs> fathers. <laughs> That's where, when they're singing that, you really get Cleo and Claire. Like, they, they don't really like each other. <laughs> oh, yeah. Really I miss the TCM movies too, Ryan. 
that's one of the fun that's a fun fact i guess kind of that Cloris, Le <laughs> Cloris Leachin wasn't necessarily the most well liked on set yeah which is which is a bummer mhm mm i heard that in the the podcast and she she was kind of uh she kind of ran the show and, and that claire uh uh, Cleo and Claire didn't really like each other. Well, Cleo apparently, allegedly, <laughs> was um, was not the biggest fan of Cloris. Or, or yeah. Cloris would get under her skin. I, that's more, more mm -hmm. what, get under her skin. Yeah, but uh, one thing that she did do during filming, uh, she loved to bring food for the whole yep. cast. Yeah. For everybody. She would like, uh, one of the stories was like she cooked up huge pots of chili and brought it and, and everybody was eating it. And so I think that was just her way of saying, hey, here's food, but I'm going to bug the hell out of you for the rest of the time we're filming. <laughs> you know I what? Mean, you, can't, you, get, you can't get mad at somebody who just fed you. You can't get mad at chili. And I'm <laughs> really mad. Right. Uh, the Absent Minded Millionaires. Uh, this is a lovely new Instagram account that I came across uh, just a couple of days ago. And she says, that's the downside of these lovely movies. Barely many, barely any on Disney Plus and expensive to rent. Um, I wanted to give her a shout out here. If you guys are listening, go and follow her account. And uh, she's going to she's gonna set up some uh, live action uh chat groups i think like a discord chat and uh just like a, a little avenue where we can all communicate and share our love for these films this is one way that jared and i like to share our love and that's by putting these little instagram live chats out really quick i just wanted to tell her thanks for chiming in and um oh okay another scene chris loves when barbara harris is like putting 15 boxes of 99 cent Cheerios into her <laughs> shopping basket. <laughs> well, and hiding like a, a giant Zach Morris type walking yeah. behind. <laughs> I know. behind. Oh my gosh. Yeah. All right. Well, we, I think we're going to stop in, at about 10 30. So these last 10 minutes, we'll share some fun facts and I've minutes. got a few. Do you, do you have any? I have a couple. We've got, we've already mentioned a couple of them. Somebody okay. actually Look, Hills Angels. Yeah, every yeah, Hills Angels was one of them. Uh, I'm going to go back through my um, outline here. Uh, the film, was, it was filmed at the Disney Studios in 42 different locations around L.A. We kind of talked about Burbank and North Hollywood, but also Long Beach, Pasadena, and New Hall. So New Hall was probably the area where they filmed that final demolition scene, which is kind of like up up near like the intersection of I-5 and 14, like the Antelope Valley Freeway. Okay. Up there, kind of close to where the, um, oh, what's the name of the ranch where they do a lot of filming? I think that's the name of the town it's in. Oh, the... You know, uh, Golden Oak. Golden yeah. Oak Ranch. ranch. Santa Clarita. Yeah. yeah, that's Santa Clarita Newhall area right there. We filmed uh, an episode of Tough as Nails on Ranch. Oh, did you? Yeah. So you got to go to uh, the Triple R? Yes. Lucky. <laughs> and and you ran around on the hill where Kevin Corcoran rode Old Yeller in the grass? We, we did not. It was only one day. They were very <laughs> strict about where we filmed. Oh, I bet. Yeah. Very, very strict. And the bridge over the river from Follow Me Boys. Oh. oh I would die if I got to tour that. I have a friend who's been out there and he's like, Next time I go out to see him, he, he, he'd consider taking me out there. So, um, And if that happens, I'll yeah. call you up. You have to yeah. call me up. And Jim and whoever else is around. We'll have a whole gaggle. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, but, but we have to sing the Triple R song, you know. <laughs> <laughs> That's our admission Okay. the Gold Oak Ranch. All right. Uh, let's see here. I don't know if you wrote this down, but in the scene where the church b blows up, did you write that down? Nope. Uh, Go for it. The movie crew didn't realize until after the destruction that there was no film in the camera. Oh, no. 
So the church had to be rebuilt and blown up again. Apparently. Oh man. And, and I heard that Bruce Bilson hated fire. He, he did not want to do that scene again. Yeah. He was like, he, yep. So yeah. Wow. That's crazy. Uh, a little bit about that opening animation sequence, uh, which I love. Art Stevens, Joe Hale did that. And I always like when the music first comes on, it, it sounds like music from the Peanuts. <laughs> to me. From the Peanuts? Yeah, like the like the Halloween special. I don't know. It's just like that weird, like, dum, dum, dum. Maybe I'm way off base on this, but. <laughs> uh and then another part of this, like, you know how the, the Rolls Royce is, is part of this animation sequence? It's like an extended mm -hmm. Rolls Royce, kind of like a limousine looking thing. And it like is driven into the back of a garbage truck with like a compressor thing. Yes. And, and Reverend Hill goes in there and all the kids and the animals and they get, they get smashed. <laughs> they get squashed. <laughs> I don't <laughs> like. When I first watched this, I was like, is this like foreshadowing? I, I don't know. I'm so glad that nobody got squashed in a garbage truck. <laughs> but then at the very end of this is that classic transition from like sketch art or, or a drawing to live action, which I love. It, you see it in quite a few film openings. A couple examples that I know of, of are The Happiest Millionaire. Yep. When it gets to that, that oh my gosh, that's just a beautiful opening sequence. That art. I love Happiest Millionaire. I yeah. love Happiest Millionaire. Yeah, and then it like transitions to the streets of Philadelphia, like the Rittenhouse Square area, oh. and uh, it, and you see the ice the ice truck or a van, like a carriage, and then it just transitions from that drawing to live action. Another one of I think my most favorite one is uh from hans breaker or the silver skates mm. that's another one where it's showing scenes of holland and there's this gorgeous field with the windmill and it it transitions from a drawing of that in full color to the windmill in live action and the windmill spinning around it, it's so cool that's a great movie too hans yeah breaker. oh i think we might have to do that one but speaking of coming up next and we'll get to that here we're, we're going to talk about some of the next films we're going to do but uh just to kind of close this out some more fun facts uh md snotty mentioned the 14 automobiles and the one motorcycle that was a total of one hundred and fifty-five thousand dollars worth of cars they destroyed for that that demolition sequence in, and it's so <laughs> in, in 1979 that's wow yeah yeah, so quite the investment. I didn't look up the, the box office figures or the profit. Uh, I, you... couldn't, I, I couldn't find it. I did a quick search, but on the podcast, the director said that uh, on the other podcast, mm -hmm. they had said that um, it had made over $4 million, which apparently... Oh, yeah, yeah, which was pretty good. I think he said it was in the top 10 grossing films of 79, and that made him happy. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Mm-hmm. Bruce Bilson. He was proud of this movie. He only did, this was probably his most successful film. I think he did another one called Chattanooga Choo Choo or something. That, yeah, he said that that one kind of got that tanked. That yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, the female crime fighters known as the North Avenue Irregulars are based on the Baker Street Irregulars. Street boys employed by Sherlock Holmes as intelligence agents. Did you know that? I did not. That's that's where Reverend that's that's Reverend Albert Fay Hill's creation. So not Disney, because that was the name of his book. So he came up with that irregulars based on the Sherlock Holmes stories. Uh, and then back to the demolition derby. Uh, you know, I think one reason why this movie did so well. Uh, was because of the popularity of the time of demolition derby, CB radio culture, Smokey and the Bandit, car stunts. That was really popular in the late 70s. Heck, when I was a kid, we used to play crash up demolition derby with our Hot Wheels and Tonka toys. 
Oh, for sure. <laughs> yeah, that was all the rage. I mean, you, you'd be hard pressed to try to find a, uh, a mint condition Tonka truck, especially like the yellow one with the dump truck thing. That was, that was uh, destroyed in our household many times. <laughs> <laughs> and the last thing I have here is on the church. So they had a lot of difficulty trying to find a church. You know, the North Avenue uh, Presbyterian Church, what they were going to use for it. Mm -hmm. And so um, after searching around town for the right church, John Mansbridge, John's Mansbridge, head of the art department at Disney, also credited as the art director on this film. He approached Bruce Bilson with a drawing of a candidate. And Bruce was like, hey, where's that? It's perfect. And and John's like, it's on a studio lot. It's a Southern mansion. And I think it's the same house that like uh, that darn cat where Brody McDowell's house. Oh. I want to say it's, it's, it looks really similar to that. But the, what they had to do with this Southern mansion was they had to rotate it 90 degrees so that the, the, the columns were not facing out. Uh, so the actual church is the side of that house. And so on top of that section of the house, they built the steeple. And then on the south, what was originally the, the west side of the house is where they built the uh, offices and the school. And uh, so they did all the exterior filming on the lot. And the interior filming was actually done at a neighborhood church near Bilson's home in North Hollywood. Hmm. So that that's uh, that's I think that's everything I've got in my notes that we haven't mentioned. Any last minute alibis, final thoughts on the North Avenue Irregulars, Jared? This one is this one's quite an odd one in like the best way. It's typical Disney, but not like it's a little bit more highbrow than the others that came out through the 70s with the exception with the exception I believe of like Freaky Friday but mm -hmm. you know the 70s was not a very successful year or decade for the Disney company and I feel like this is the last and I could be wrong please correct me but I feel like this one could be the last of the Disney comedy live actions for a while yeah um, I think pretty much like after 79 they started getting into some crazy stuff like Midnight Madness. That yeah. might be, but that didn't really have, uh, it was Disney, but. It wasn't not. really advertised as Disney. <laughs> and then it was all like darker stuff, like Watcher in the Woods and, uh, yeah. you know, Something Wicked This Way Comes, Return to Oz mm -hmm. uh, in the 80s, because I think they were. Trench coat. <laughs> trench coat yes yeah yeah I, I think you're right probably until uh, i couldn't even tell you what the next slapstick oh herbie goes bananas yeah that might be the last one chris yeah that was the it came out the next year oh yep you're right you're absolutely right yeah. look at that yeah well i said 1980 didn't i but it was like it was it was very <laughs> yeah and i if that's the case, I do feel like the Disney went out with a with a bang when it comes to Yeah. Right. I agree. Yeah. They this is I was so happy to discover this. It definitely is in the top ten of, of my if I had to pick a list of ten films, it, this would be on it. it. It is so funny. There are so many laugh out loud moments in, in this. It gets more enjoyable with each viewing. Yep. And, you know, I watched it. I, my mom actually came and visited me a couple weeks ago. And I made her watch it and we enjoyed it and laughed. And then you guys picked for us to do North Avenue Regulars. And I was so excited. And I was like, I have to watch it again. And I enjoyed it even more because I watched it again yesterday. And I'm like, it's just so well done. It's fa it's, it doesn't drag. Every scene is needed. Mm -hmm. And anything it's too short in my opinion yeah it is it, it just it it 
it breezes right on by. Like you said, it's a very tight script. I, I think Bruce Bilson hit a home run with this. I agree. Especially with the cast. I mean, the cast, you got the six ladies, right? Seven, if you count Delaney. <laughs> 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 we didn't even mention that he, uh, he <laughs> the whole reason why he's dressed as a lady, it's because the women have to be driving the cars, but Patsy Kelly can't drive. <laughs> yeah. Nope. Or she she can drive on railroad tracks. So yeah, Ryan asks is the top ten live action films of all time, and I would have to say yes, of all time. Yep, it's it's it's. I would put it on my list if I was forced to make a top ten. Yep, I'd have to leave off something. Probably Mary Poppins. Oh, I think those. Are- <laughs> <laughs> uh oh. Oh, we just lost all our viewers. No, Mary <laughs> Poppins would definitely be on that list for sure. It would probably be number two. <laughs> In fact, I think everybody knows what my favorite live action movie is. Um, oh, there's a little little fight about Herbie Goes Bananas. Yeah, that is definitely the worst of the four, three? Four, there's four. Well, four. If oh, if you count Lindsay Lohan's Lohan. version. Uh, Oh my gosh. And there was a fight going on about Freaky Friday over Jodie Foster versus Lindsay Lohan. Ugh. Oh, I started that. I did start yeah. that. Sorry. Oh, did you start that one? Chris was like, hey, okay. Oh, for Freaky Friday, the, for the next one, I said the one with Lindsay Lohan, winky face. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. MD Snotty knows me too well. Pollyanna, of course. Oh, Moon Pilot. Chris, Moon Pilot. Okay. I quit the podcast. I'm- <laughs> Okay, I think it, it is absolutely mandatory that we have to mention Moon Pilot on every episode, even on this show we do, Jared. <laughs> it, it has to be mentioned. And we're never going to watch it. We're never going to do a show on it. We're just going to tell you how bad it is. That's a weird. <laughs> it is a weird. It one. is weird. <laughs> but a great song. And uh, oh, my gosh, the, the, the female actress is absolutely gorgeous. Uh, Danny Saval. Mm-hmm. I'm saying. Seven moons of Beta Lyrae. Uh, but everybody, if you have not Seven seen moons. Pilot, watch <laughs> Pilot because it's a Disney one. You have to watch them all. I've watched them. Yeah, all. you you do have to watch it. <laughs> Ryan watched it on Tuesday. Well, good grief, that's awesome. <laughs> Jim loves Moon Pilot. Moon Pilot is the new Macbeth of the talks. Okay, that. Yeah, I, I'm not sure if you're saying it's good or bad. <laughs> uh, okay. Anyways, so. When we asked you guys what you wanted us to review, um, definitely this movie got like most of the votes. And then the next one was uh, Follow Me Boys. And, oh, do do you have the list handy? I don't have it in front of me. Um, There were four, right? Follow Me Boys, was it Bullwhip Griffin? No. I don't think so. Definitely follow. Well, follow me, boys is going to be the next show that we do. Oh, Pete's Dragon and some Pete's of- Dragon. Yeah, yeah, Pete's Dragon and, and some Magic. Which, by the way, the I think the lead singer from Strawberry Shortcakes was in Pete's Dragon, and I believe he was. One oh, of- yeah. What was his name? Gary Morgan. It is. I wrote it down. I wrote it down. Gary Morgan. Yep. Yep. Mm-hmm. and Devlin Max Devlin oh my gosh wow that's awesome yeah and then he does well, yeah he did a bunch of stunts then for Disney after the fact yeah so I think we got our next three follow me boys Pete's dragon and then there was another old one summer magic summer magic yeah perfect right in time for summer so uh that that'll that's the that's our next three and i saw a lot of votes for freaky friday so maybe we'll do that one after that because i really love it talking about 1970s uh comedies i do man (laughs) because i there's just so they're just the movies you want to put on to have a good laugh and just if you want to feel good 
Here's the thing. Normally I get frustrated with plot holes. And um, what I like about you, what I like about all of the people watching here is I feel like we have such a, um, a good tongue in cheek sense of humor and the fact that we can make fun of it and still love it. Do you oh, yeah. I can make fun of the ridiculousness of North Avenue Irregulars and give it the highest praise. Well, I think that's probably why we love these films so much. There's so many like ridiculous scenes that I think like a critic or a non-Disney person would just look at this scene and say, this is crap. Yeah. But they, those people just don't get it. 